And a young art history grad lands a coveted summer internship at the Cloisters, New York's Gothic museum and garden devoted to art and architecture of the Middle Ages. What begins as an academic curiosity quickly turns into an obsession when she discovers a hidden 15th century deck of tarot cards that might hold the key to predicting the future, drawing her into a dangerous game of power, seduction, and ambition. What can the tarot card show her about the past and about her future? Ooh. Okay. <laughs> if, you have, if I hadn't read it, I would read it again. The Cloisters <laughs> is Katie Hayes' debut novel, and it's a New York Times bestseller. Congratulations. And thank you so much. <laughs> Katie, we're happy you're here. We're also happy to have our Read with Jenna book club members. They are all up in the wall, and we'll talk to them in just a yes. second. Okay, Katie, so you've worked in art history uh, for your whole career. What does it feel like to take that work and create this mystery that is so good? You know, it's been a really incredible experience, and I feel like I've enjoyed it so much. I often joke that the only skill set you really have when you come out of grad school in the humanities is that you can write. And so I feel like, you know, it's a great way to kind of transition from academia to fiction. It's been wonderful. Well, what's so interesting, this is your debut novel, and a lot of people write debut novels, and they don't really go anywhere. <laughs> this one took off like a rocket ship. Did you get good advice from someone when it came to, like, how do I present this book? What's the best way to write it? No, I mean, I think I'm just a huge reader. Like, a lot of writers, I'm a really passionate reader, and I know what I love in a good story, and I really enjoy a mystery. I really enjoy a murder. I like atmosphere. I really want to travel on the page. You know, I'm I'm interested in going someplace. I want to spend several hours in my books. And mm -hmm. so I think that's what I wanted to give to readers. By the way, Katie writes about place better mm -hmm. than almost any writer wow. I've ever read. Not just the Cloisters, which is this cool museum yeah, yeah. on the Upper West Side of Manhattan, but also the Bronx. Like, all of these places in New York, the Adirondacks, I want to go there. <laughs> I want to go there. Okay, this is also about female ambition. Yeah. There's two women in this. Like, I've kind of said it's the talented Mrs. Ripley. Mm -hmm. um, um, and so why why did you want to write about female ambition? Mm -hmm. It's something that's super interesting. Yeah, I'm personally really interested in, in ambition broadly, but mm. I think especially I'm interested in ambition in female friendships and the way a female friendship can kind of span the entire emotional gamut in one conversation. Mm -hmm. You can be supportive and kind of passive aggressive yeah. and also, you know, a little toxic. And so I'm really interested in the way female friendships have this huge breadth. And I think that makes such an interesting topic for fiction, especially in an environment where you have two people effectively competing for the same thing and for the same goal. jenna has been talking about how this book has so many twists and turns. So I'm just curious, when you write the book, do you say, I've got the beginning and I've got the end? I know where I want it to end. Or does the end surprise you too? Yeah, I wish I knew where my books ended. And I'm really <laughs> jealous of writers who can outline, who kind of have a sense yeah. of where they're going. I really have to write my way into a story, and then the ending usually surprises me. Oh. Well, yeah. this ending surprised me, and as you know, I've seen every Law & Order there possibly and is. And by the way, all she likes to do is figure out <laughs> I figure how things, things are going to end. That's I usually figure thing. it out chapter three. You yeah. have surprised me, and it yeah. is incredible. I know that we have a group of readers that really want to talk with you. So the first question, let's head over to our Zoom wall. The first question is from Cassie. She is a loyal book club member in Michigan. Hey, Cassie, what's your question for Katie? Hi. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Um, both tarot cards and astrology play a significant role in the story. What gave you this idea? Do you read tarot cards in your own life? I think it's a great question. And, you know, I love astrology, and I think I'm a really terrible tarot card reader. <laughs> um, but I really do enjoy it as a practice, and I think I'm really interested in the sense that these days people are pursuing things like astrology and tarot cards as a way to kind of have a system of belief outside of a traditional religious system. And so I think I'm really fascinated in that aspect of it. Yeah, yeah. it's really interesting. All right, we've got another question. This is from Paige. She's a librarian in mm. Oregon. Paige, what is your question for Katie? Uh, good morning. I love that the characters and Anne's books took up more space in her room than her clothes. <laughs> do your bookshelves do the same? Yes, I feel like that was very autobiographical. In fact, I think my parents still have some of my graduate school books and they would love to get them out of their house. I, you know, genuinely, I feel like my entire office walls are just crammed with books. Um, they're the best kind of 
thing to have. They're wonderful to take up space. Yeah. What, what's a book you go back to and read over and over again? Oh, that's a great question. I love Rebecca by oh, Daphne du Maurier. I think mm -hmm. it's one of my favorite books mm -hmm. of all time. Mm -hmm. um, did you ever read The Secret History? Because I also just announced <laughs> oh, that that was our yeah. read with Jenna Pick. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so excited. I'm obviously a huge Donna Tartt fan. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm thrilled. I think they kind of pair nicely together. Okay, you, you have, if you liked reading The Cloisters, which everybody did, yeah. Katie has a book recommendation for you. What is it? Yeah, I love Christopher Bolin. He is a literary suspense novelist, and I'm recommending A Beautiful Crime, oh. which is a novel of his. It's set in Venice. If you like the story of Anna Delvey, if you like a good con woman, mm -hmm. uh, it's a great place to start. It's the story of two young men who try to swindle an aging gentleman out of his money and his palazzo in wow. Venice. Ooh. And everything goes wrong. Of course, there's a murder, and Christopher Bolin beautiful writer, wonderful on the page, and mm. the book is just incredible. Okay. Gosh, well, Katie, yeah. thank you so thank you. much. And you can check out The Cloisters and more of Katie's book recommendations at today.com. And while you're there, why don't you pick up Jenna's next pick. It's called <laughs> The Secret History by Donna Tartt. Okay, don't forget, y'all, tonight yes. I'll be hosting my first ever Read with Jenna book club event, and I'm so excited because it's with Katie. Yeah. And we're going to have cocktails and conversations. And you can buy your tickets still still now if you oh, want cool. to. You can scan that QR code. And the best part is it's virtual. Join from anywhere. We're going to have some breakout sessions. We're going to have a tarot card reader. We're going to have Ooh. a mixologist. Oh, by the way, what fun. a fun event. 6.30 tonight, all right?